Let the record show the uh, regular meeting of the Board of Education has convened and we're at uh, 702. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Jocelyn, uh, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? That's Jocelyn Hernandez. Please put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we move any farther, we're going to introduce our new Rialto Unified School District student board member in the August board meeting when the next school year begins. But for tonight, okay, I'm reading what I have here. We have our uh, scholarship recipient present, Jocelyn Hernandez, a 2013 Rialto High School graduate. And I should have read this earlier, but she led us in the Pledge allegiance, but I wanted her, I wanted everybody to understand that uh, not only was she uh, helping us out with the flag salute, she's also a recipient of a certificate tonight that we're going to honor her in just a, a few minutes. But it was it was passed out to me, and so we read that. But we're going to move right along. Congratulations, Justin. Next, we have a report out of closed session. The Board of Education approved resolution number 12-13-89 for release and reassignment of certificated management employees, and a copy of this report is available. The vote was unanimous. The Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Maria Lara as program specialist, Morris Elementary School, effective July 1st, 2013. And that vote was also unanimous. Is Maria here? No, she's in Syracuse at oh. her daughter's graduation. Okay. When she returns, we'll be sure to have her here to introduce her to the board. That is all. Okay. Next, we have the adoption of the agenda. Uh, do we have a proposal to accept? I propose we accept the agenda. Um, we have some additions, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're, we're adding uh, discussion action item reference J8.1-2. You want to read that? An action item is not appearing on the agenda has risen that requires immediate action of the board and cannot wait until the, the regular meeting. The matter is approved uh, as an approval of an MOU between the California School Employees Association, CSEA, Chapter 203, and Rialto Unified School District concerning the implementation of a classified layoff that the board has approved to take effect on July 1, 2013. So in addition to that, I'd like to, to make a comment here that uh, this is an emergency. That's why we're adding it. It wasn't 
uh, included in the agenda. And uh, under Government Code 54954-2, subparagraph B, this is an emergency situation which allows us to do this. We will have copies available for anybody requesting copies of this item that uh, is not on the agenda that is added as an emergency. Okay. Uh, with, with that being said, we've uh, omitted uh, reference J5-1. Uh, and I will read this. Uh, district is in need of a firm to perform a review of selected contracts and payments from 2009 to the present for professional services, construction, and other services. Uh, so that is reference J5-1, and we're omitting. Okay. Let's see. We're omitting or replacing <coughs> it? Replacing. replacing. We're replacing, replacing it. Replacing and then we're replacing that with uh, reference J5-1, which right. is a different read. And I'm going to read this now. Uh, the district is in need, which I just read of a firm to perform, uh, a review of selected contracts and payments from 2009 to the present for professional services, construction, and other services. The district is recommending contracting with the Fiscal Crisis and Management Assistance Team, FIGMAT, to complete this contract review. Uh, FIGMAT uh, provides a variety of services to school districts and county offices of education upon request. The district has requested that FIGMAT assign professionals to study specific aspects of the Rialto Unified School District's se selective contracts and payments. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve an agreement with the Fiscal Crisis and Management Assistant Team to complete a review of the district's selective contracts and payments from 2009 to present for professional services, construction, and other services at a not to exceed a cost of $8,500, including reimbursable expenses to be paid from the General Fund Board of Education account. Okay, so we, we replaced, we added, we have a, uh, Propose a uh, move by Mr. Martinez. Let, let me re-propose it since there are some additions. Um, let me re-propose that we accept the agenda with uh, the additions and amendments. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Montes, second. Are they voting on adding the MOU? We're, yes. yes. And uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Mr. Board President, I hate to do this. Um, on an added item that is necessary to put on the agenda, you must vote to put it on the agenda, and you must have a roll call vote. Since it's not five members here, you must have all five to say affirmative to put okay. it on the agenda. You must have a motion and a second to put it on the agenda. It is a major, major Brown Act violation. It, Thank you. Is uh, John still here? No, John. Too bad. Mr. Pru would you like to join us here? <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, we're gonna take a roll call and I, uh, I appreciate the, uh, the advisement. So uh, Mr. Martinez? Yes, sir. We have a yay. Mr. Montez? A. Mr. Montez and Ms. O'Kelly? A, but did we make a motion to do this? I, I propose we make a motion to accept uh, J8.1. To add to the, to be to add added, added to, to the, the agenda. agenda. Correct, I'm sorry. Okay. And we have, a, we have a first, a second on the roll call, and Mr. Montes or Ms. O'Kelly? Aye. Ms. O'Kelly and Mr. Montes, aye. Uh, Mr. Aye. Martinez, aye. Aye. And myself is an aye. I, I'm sorry, just for clarification, uh, Mr. Pruitt, um, the super, a super majority is required, right, meaning three or more votes? 
in a case like this where you're adding an item that has not been on the agenda for 72 hours and it's less than five members, if five were here, you only needed three out of the five. But since you're operating tonight with four board members, you must have four. It's less than five of your normal board uh, pres members present, so you must have four to add an item to the agenda. You so can't we're in, have three. So if everybody, if everybody agrees, then we're in the clear. You're good. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Clear up any understandings. We're okay with the uh, the reference J81-2. Okay. So. Uh, Moving right along, the uh, adoption of the agenda has been passed. Next, we have uh, presentations. Okay, uh, number one, we have uh, recognition of superintendent scholarship recipient, Jocelyn Hernandez. And uh, presenting will be uh, Vice President Edgar Montes. Thank you, Chairman. President uh, Joseph Ayala. I'd like to, uh, fir first of all, good evening, everybody. Buenas noches. Um, I'd like to call up uh, uh, one of our teachers and coach, Joe Baca Jr., and um, also Jocelyn Hernandez Vega. Please come on up. For those of you who don't know, Jocelyn is a recipient of the 2013 Rialto Unified School District on behalf of the Board of Education. She's received the superintendent's scholarship for $1,000. And, ju and just to say a few words, um, I attended uh, Jocelyn's uh, signing at Rialto High School and um, I'm gonna give her an opportunity to speak a little bit about that. It was awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, I was actually assigned to a school in North Carolina for softball, and um, that's my dream. I'm gonna be able to be able to play and study at the same time. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's your certificate. And more important than the certificate is the check. <laughs> congratulations, congratulations, Coach uh, Baca Jr. Thank you very much for all you do for our kids, and thank you, Jocelyn, for being an example and, an, and a role model for the rest, rest of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, please. Yeah, thank you, um, Vice President, uh, Honorable Board, uh, Superintendent, and uh, public. I just wanted to congratulate Jocelyn Hernandez. I know that she was given an award. I wanted to thank the superintendent for giving the $1,000 scholarship. But one of the things I want to talk about is Jocelyn Hernandez, the person. People don't know she's actually a 3.8 student. She's an outstanding uh, person. She's a churchgoer, a good Catholic. But most of all, what she did for the program, she was always committed, never quit. She went on a program that was 1 in 18, and she stuck with it, never quit. And one of the things that she did is she made history. She helped make history this year. She helped lead Rialto High School to the first ever SAL championship in softball. Give it up for Jocelyn. First ever in school history. And she was a big part of that. And one of the things I want to share, she was first team, all San Andreas League. Uh, she was also the team MVP. And also what she did is she was all county honorable mention. So she received a lot of accolades. She was second team all league as a sophomore and a junior first team this year. And actually we had a dedication at Rialto High School. Her number is going to be placed on the ball field there at Rialto High School. We had a great ceremony. I want to thank Edgar Montes and uh, Mr. Ayala for attending the uh, signing ceremony along with the superintendent. Thank you again for helping out this young lady and reaching out because you're going to make a difference in her life. And one of the things the superintendent shared at her signing ceremony is she has one of the hardest jobs. She not only has to maintain her grades, she's going to be an athlete too, so a student athlete. And I'm very proud of her, and she's going to turn heads in North Carolina. All right, so we're proud of you. Give it up for Jocelyn Hernandez. Thank you. I just like good, this. Good choice, Superintendent. Thank you, Dr. Seabrook. <laughs> Thank you. i just like to say to Jocelyn and uh, to all of the students in our school district, you're a perfect example of what a student athlete is. A student first than an athlete. And we're really proud of you and we wish you the best. Very nice. 
Next, we have a Measure Y facilities update by Mohammed. President Ayala, board members, um, uh, uh, Superintendent Cabinet, and uh, all the audience tonight, we bring a report to the board uh, our uh, uh, Measure Y Series A bond project and uh, the status and up to date where where we are and where the project stand as of today. Uh, the report I'm presenting tonight is a two part. Uh, first part is uh, all the update uh, project status, um, which is, I'm going to cover. Uh, behind me the fall, uh, will be um, uh, our um, architect firm. Uh, she will present the uh, Eisenhower project, which is a uh, board you express interest and you'd like to know where we are in, uh, with our Eisenhower high school project. She will cover the second part, so please bear with me. Um, beginning, um, uh, uh, this is this is the project we are, uh, completed, um, and you can see the name of the project starting Rialto Middle School Classroom Editions and, and others. Uh, you have a, a complete uh, report, uh, I believe, in front of you. These are the projects that already completed and using the bond money. Here's the pictures of the projects that are completed. We see the previous slide uh, starting Rialto Middle High School Classrooms, uh, Interim Housing. Um, and others, um, as you can see the pictures um, uh, as they're completed. Beginning slide four, again, other projects completed, which is, you see in, a, in a slide two, name of the project, our science lab, uh, technology upgrade, um, Cole Middle School, and Rialto High School projects. Continue to the next slide, which is, this is the part of the completion of the Eisenhower High School projects. And you can see the, some of the uh, completions of the, the high school, and they're, they're on this uh, slide. Now, the projects under construction is the beginning of slide six, and this is a list of the projects that are currently under construction, uh, starting with the Culinary Art Academy and Engineering Academies. Some of the projects you may drive by, you've seen it with the status, and they're under construction, and I'll cover um, some of them. The expected date, as you can see, uh, completion date of um, the first project, um, Culinary Art Academy, August 2013, and others, you can see that uh, the date, expected date, uh, coming soon. Uh, Eisenhower High School, as you can see that, uh, the, which is, um, um, if I can point out, uh, the last one in the bullet, uh, we, we complete, um, uh, to be completed, phase one and phase two by end of August. These are the project under constrictions, um, the list you've seen, and they're to be complete uh, by end of August, uh, starting with the um, Culinary Academy, Engineering Academy, and others. And uh, the Engineering Academy, the pictures you see, it looks yellow, but it's a little bit look like um, the, uh, the, the, the paint has been changed. The color will be similar to the Culinary Art Academy, but um, when you took the pictures, it was the earlier picture, so I want to make sure when you see it, you will not see yellow. Um, continue to the sli next slide. Uh, these are project under construction, our Carter High School track and field. As you can see, the um, construction begin, and you can see the, where we are now. This is the Rialto High School track and field. Again, construction begin, sorry. They, uh, they may miss, uh, right now it's projected to miss one, one game. Lose one home game. Yeah. Lose one home game. Good point. Yeah, we are, we're the moving forward, but I think we'll not be ready for a season. Just one. <laughs> I, have a, I have a CM sitting in, in the back of the room, so I have a witness. Thank you. 
continue to the, this uh, next slide, a project under construction. So this is our Eisenhower High School infrastructure and upgrade. You can see some of the projects uh, currently going on uh, at that high school. And I send the slide, this slide. Uh, upcoming constructions, uh, these are the list of the project um, are um, um, as coming ahead of us, Cali Elementary School, Classroom Editions, Kusara, Yehu, and Technology Upgrade, and, and uh, Eisenhower High School Electrical and Gas Upgrade, which is phase three. And I'll cover that, and you can see projected start date, June 2014, completion, August 2014. Here's a uh, picture of the upcoming construction projects, and they're listed um, below. The, uh, you can see the name of the, each of the projects. They're listed. Continue to the next slide. Here's a summarize uh, how much money we spend year to date. I know this is a small font. You can see the, the bottom line, you can see we, we have a balance left, unobligated, unencumbered, about a little over $2.9 million, the bond money. And some of the project is not all bond money. It's a, uh, it's some of them we use other source of funding. But these are the list of the project and, and where the money we have as of May 31st, 2013, the remaining balance um, uh, available for any other projects, which is not a lot of money. At this time, I want to turn over to uh, Betsy uh, Dordery. She's a partner from uh, Dordery Dordery Architects. They're the, the uh, architect of the Eisenhower project and she'll cover the Eisenhower project and Darcy. Yes, thank you, Mohammed and Bill Ralph will join me with uh, District m and uh, Thank you, board president, board members, uh, staff and members of the community. It's a privilege to be here with you this evening and I think we all share a passion for Eisenhower High School. We also have our construction manager contractor with us as well. So if you have questions, we're prepared to answer them for you. Bill, do you have the magic clicker? Excellent. Uh, I'm Betsy Olnick Doggerty with Doggerty and Doggerty Architects. And uh, we are looking forward to sharing with you what's going on at Eisenhower High School. Some of this work has been completed in advance of our involvement on the campus, uh, but this is a brief list of the description of the scope of work, uh, technology network upgrades, science labs, HVAC, and power, and those are really two different issues. Uh, classroom and toilet facilities, much of that work has been completed. Uh, new performing arts centers in our future. Uh, HVAC in the gymnasium was accomplished last summer. Uh, as you know, we have a new stadium planned, and that's part of the master plan, and we have finished the uh, conceptual uh, drawings for that, and a synthetic track and field to go along with that work. Uh, so the original campus priorities uh, as of February 2012 was the HVA HVAC in the gymnasium, top priority, and that's been completed. Uh, the master plan, which has also been completed. Uh, upgrading site electrical, gas, and HVAC, and you'll see some things that you already know about uh, the fact that we have declining infrastructure, and that is a priority really before we can do anything else. And then following that will be the realization of a new stadium, a new classroom building with toilets, uh, removing some of your portable classrooms, the new performing arts center, and really looking forward to a very holistic uh, contribution to that campus. So this is what you are probably all aware of. And uh, Bill and I have been working very closely together. And so of course, uh, Wes uh, from Neff Construction and myself got a call saying, we have a little problem, very first home game when school started and the lights blew out. Now we knew that we were on the edge. We've known that from the beginning and so it was a very, in a way, fortuitous opportunity for us to be able to deliver the urgency of the necessity for a power upgrade for this site. And then shortly behind that, I get another call from Bill saying school starting in about a week and a half and we're not making any ice at our cogen plant. And he was literally, and I love the slide down below, of course that's not our ice because we didn't have the time to do ice sculptures, but I literally had to import ice to keep the campus up and running with uh, 16,000 pounds of ice. To keep it going for three days. Wow. So the, the need for infrastructure upgrades came home loud and clear at the beginning of this last academic year. 
Uh, so there have been some completed projects, some which were done in advance of our involvement on campus, which include the swimming pool renovation and the interim housing. Uh, then we came in and did the overall master plan. We're on a real short fuse to get the air conditioning and the gymnasium accomplished in the summer. And we were able to pull that off with a lot of uh, teamwork. Uh, the science lab upgrades were something that was accomplished while we were on deck, but it was done by others. Uh, the wireless network upgrade was also done by others, and NEF Construction is currently bringing air conditioning into those rooms to make sure that we're cooling that IT equipment so that we have an up and running functional system. So that represents basically the Series A uh, Measure Y bonds. And as you can see, we had a little help from a couple of other sources as well. The QEIA and the E-rate both have helped to accomplish that goal, which is almost $6.5 million to date. So just here's some photographs. Uh, the gymnasium with the air conditioning is on the upper left, as well as you can see the science classroom, some of the electrical work, the relocatable buildings, and the pool. So that gives you an indication of, of the scope of some of the work that's been accomplished to date. So we have a few things in process. We mentioned the HVAC uh, IT. Uh, there are seven rooms that have new telecommunications equipment. Those rooms need air conditioning in order to keep that equipment cool. So that work will be done before school starts. That was a must. Upgrading the site electrical and gas is under construction. It, as we're referring to the first piece as phase one. We're in the middle of phase two right now, so if you go out to campus, you can see all of the work that's being done on campus. And then the phase three of that work is actually then making the connections to the buildings. And that has to be done in phases because we're sneaking in there while the students are not there because we are having to take down the power during the transitions. So uh, we see that we'll be completing the site electrical and gas. Uh, the whole thing, phase three, will be done by June 2014. One of the pieces of that work getting into the buildings does go to the Division of State Architects, so those plans will be reviewed and approved. And as part of that, there's the cost for that, and we are pursuing potential state assistance. Our feeling is that this is a safety issue, and we're hoping that the state will agree with us, and as a result, we have the potential of getting some financial support from the state, so we're pursuing that. Uh, status and priority that brings us down to our grand total. Uh, we know that there are permanent buildings that are in need of HVAC upgrades, and we've talked about the ice coming into the central plant crashing and burning. Our goal is to be able to take that, ultimately take that plant offline so that we will be providing package units on the individual buildings. And what does that mean? If you have a problem with one building, the whole site doesn't go down. So that's extremely important. It gives us a little redundancy. That is something that will have to be done over time. Once again, we'd love to think that maybe the state will agree that there's a safety issue associated here as well. So we're going to have a separate request. This one may be a little more of a reach for us to see if we can get some help there as well. Uh, we look forward to being able to continue the work on the stadium. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the schematic design is complete. So as soon as we're ready and the district has the money to be able to tell us to move forward. Our hope is that we could get the plans done, get them into the Division of Stake Ar Architect, which takes time. Once they're approved, that approval is good for a year. So our goal is that when the bond money is available, we'll be shovel ready. So uh, because we know that the economy, as it recovers, the prices may start to go up too. So we want to be able to get in there as quickly as possible to accomplish that goal. And we have two other pieces on the campus, and that's the new classroom building and the new performing arts center. Very early conceptual modeling as part of the master plan. That's all the work that has been done on those projects to date. So these are some graphics from the master plan, which we'll just go through quickly. And I apologize that I, I know that the tags are small because I was sitting in the back of the room thinking, I can't see that with or without my glasses. So please forgive me, but this is a, a, a rendered plan of the campus to sort of orient you. Of course, you can see where the stadium occurs and the existing gym and locker rooms, baseball fields, band and music, aquatics and library all down at that end of the site. Uh, the south parking lot and then as we come around, we see the play fields across the street where the administration building and library is, our finger plan classroom buildings uh, that are permanent as well as portables, the quad, and our multi-purpose room and food service at the north end of the campus. So that just gives you an orientation. This is the master plan looking at the overall arching features of the campus, part of what was completed in September of 2012. Uh, the next slide. 
uh, shows us the electrical systems. So when you look conceptually what that means, we're really looking at putting a new electrical grid onto the campus with a new transformer, so we're working with Southern California Edison as well. Because when we finish, we want to make sure that we have enough power on that campus to support all of the new facilities that we see in our future. So we are designing this to be able to serve all of our future projections so that we're not going to find ourselves short. Yes? Uh, this is the master plan for the bond, right? This is the master plan that we have done that is looking at the future of the campus, perhaps even beyond what is in this bond measure. Where is the performing arts building? Uh, we'll get there. Okay. That was just the existing campus that we showed you to start. Oh, okay. So uh, this, we're, we're addressing each one and, and sort of, sort of, kind of in, in a priority sequence. Uh, the necessity for new infrastructure, of course, is obvious, but if we'd love to think that right away you could see money being spent in the classroom that's going to come back to the students. Well, if we don't do this, we're kind of dead in the water, so I think everybody understands that. So that's the new spine. Uh, so beyond that, we are considering that as we're looking to replace the central plant, that perhaps we look at the kitchen multipurpose room building and bring that completely offline from the central plant first. When the modernization was done in that building, it was not a complete replacement, and it did not allow that building to operate independently of the central plant. Because of the demands of that space and the fact that all the students are using it, so if we did have an outage, we could put all the kids in the gym and then the NPR, we could accommodate everybody. We wanted, we're thinking we want to do that first. So that puts it a little bit ahead of the rest and looking at the administration and library, HEVAC upgrades as well, and then the rooftop package units that would go on the individual buildings. Uh, there will be no new HVAC in the, re in the reloads, of course, because our goal is eventually they're going to go away. And they do have air conditioning as a part of them. Uh, just just kind of gives you an idea of what some of the rooftop units look like, and the goal being to completely replace the failing cogeneration plant with rooftop package units. That's what they look like. So uh, here's our stadium, and as I mentioned, we have gone through the schematic design phase, and of course, like everybody else, we have big plans for the stadium, and we have a budget. So uh, as we get into getting farther into the plan, we will be reconciling our budget with the scope of work, and so we want to make everybody aware that we have some wonderful plans for coaches' offices, team rooms, restrooms, and storage underneath the bleachers. And depending upon how the budget reconciliation works will depend upon just how much of that we can buy today. question was asked about the master plan. So if we, can't, if we decide that we're going to accept an alternate and perhaps not build the whole thing on day one, it's master plan so that it can always come in later. Um, also, on the stadium, are restrooms going to be installed on the visitor side? If you'll look, you can see that we actually have completely separate ticket booth, concession, and restrooms, one for home, one for visitors, on the opposite ends of the, camp, of the stadium entrance, and they each have their own dedicated entrance, one north and one south. Everybody will have their own place. Don't touch my stuff. And uh, then this is just an uh, image here of uh, what our new stadium will look like, as well as an example if we're able to realize our full programmatic uh, wish list for team rooms. Uh, this happens to be a team room that we did for Ventura High School in the corner, so you can get, kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Uh, we're also hoping to replace all of our 47 relocatable classrooms one day. And we've developed a prototype classroom. You can see it here at the south end of the quad, which initially will provide us with 11 new classrooms with special ed on the ground floor so that we can accomplish that from day one. That's 11 classrooms. If you go to conventional classrooms on the ground floor, there can be 12 classrooms. How many buildings does it take to replace your 47 classrooms? Three more. So do we have enough money in this bond measure to do all of this? I wish I could say yes, but I think that's an unrealistic ex expectation. Our hope is that we can get the first one. And then as we start to peel off the relocatable classrooms, we'll be making room for our Performing Arts Center in the parking lot because that first row is kind of in the way. So if you've been in that parking lot, you understand what I'm talking about. So this is looking at a new classroom building, first one with some quad improvements, and the additional ones would sort of march along where the relos are now and we gradually start peeling them off. Uh, Performing Arts Center, we had talked about uh, two significant locations, 
both along baseline, one at the corner to the left, and this one, and the reason that this sort of became the preference of the group is that as you can see, it is a focal point of the circulation spine that's already on the campus. So when you're on campus, it's very prominent. It also has street frontage, so it speaks to the community. And its proximity to the stadium, the aquatic center, creates a whole events center that becomes the heart of all of the enrichment programs on the campus. And so as a result, rather than having it kind of over by itself in the corner, the thought was, let's bring all of this together and we can have a very exciting focus of all of these events right at the end of that spine on the campus. So it becomes a real focal point and that is sort of what drove this location. So uh, we hope you're as excited as we are about the future of the Eisenhower campus and uh, we look to be elevating it to new heights. Uh, I'm a local Inland Empire girl and went to a high school that was in a similar situation about the same age. So of course it was a few years ago. But uh, I certainly, <laughs> uh, I, I kind of know what the challenges are and I couldn't be more thrilled to have the privilege to work with you to make this happen for Eisenhower. So thank you. The, the first one is there, in terms of square footage, and I don't know why they're different sizes, you have to show me where it doesn't look the same. It could just be a, a scale of the image. Ah, that's a good question. Uh, that actually, and I can explain that to you because we had a little, we, ha we had a little pie in the sky concept and that larger one is a picture of it. If I had my druthers, I'd love to take, and I don't know if I should even mention this, but I'd love to take that existing building that right now has the weight room in it and the coral. I would like to kiss that building goodbye and incorporate it into the new classroom <laughs> building. <laughs> move the choral <laughs> program over to the Performing Arts Center and open up the campus entrance to the north side of the stadium so that you have a more significant entrance to the stadium. We all got very excited about that and that's what you see. The reality is if you take something away that you already have and you're now adding another piece and more square footage into your program, your, your dollars get gobbled right up. So that's why that is an image from the master plan that explored that option. So we are moving without exploring that option at this point, but if we made a decision that we were gonna take the entire program and tuck it under the bleachers at the stadium, and then when we built the Performing Arts Center and we did a few conceptual plans and threw some dollars per square foot at them, and the fact of the matter is adding a choral room, a music room, adds square footage, increases the cost, suddenly we've busted that budget big time for the bond measure. The other but is, we can design those buildings so that they can accommodate those future additions and growth, so we can sort of reserve the opportunity, and someday that can happen. Okay. So that's kind of where we're going with that. But it's an excellent question, thank you for saying that, because you can see how much thoughtfulness has gone into this. <coughs> Bill has been at the table from day one, and he's been a tremendous resource, and the fact that we have our contractors, our partner, and we can get real about these budget numbers early in the game has been a tremendous opportunity. So. So we would like to conceptually think, whatever we do, we can also plan for the future and someday, if that building goes, imagine the entrance you could have for your stadium for your home. Be awesome. I just want to point out that Eisenhower, Mrs. O'Kelly, if the board can use the microphone for the video purposes, because on the, on the screen it looks funny, it looks like she's talking to nobody. So <laughs> if you guys can have a seat up there. Thank you so much. Now that we're done. This is magical voices. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Um, My point was, wanted to make, um, because of obviously. Uh, where my heart, <laughs> I have to be careful here. But Eisenhower tends to have the best talent in the district. And uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know, but would they, where that whole building that you referred to is a mess. I don't know if we can refurbish it or do something, but our band and choir need something, so. It's quite obvious when we toured the campus what, what that campus could benefit from, and so just a matter of money, but if we do, if we do our planning correctly and even create our new facilities correctly. If we can't afford it today, we're gonna to reserve it, a spot for it tomorrow so that we can easily expand our facilities and it'll work, still work. The one thing that I'd like to say, uh, upon arriving here, uh, the district, rightfully so, has not addressed the needs of Eisenhower High School, even the last bond that passed. And it's the flagship of our school district, among our high schools. So if anybody recognizes that we've done anything with our money, they're going to look at Eisenhower. So we have to make sure that that school reaches all the promises that these pictures have afforded us to see, because uh, otherwise we'll be judged as a failure. And I'm sure my name will be at the top of the list. <laughs> so I want to make sure we uh, give the attention that Eisenhower deserves and uh, to make it right. Not just yours, Dr. C. Mars too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have me on the board, so <laughs> it's got to happen. <laughs> thank, thank you, you all for the opportunity. And we thank you, too. <clears throat> Next, we have a superintendent's report. I'd like for Dr. Levine to um, announce the starting lineups for our elementary schools for the year 2013-14. The, admi the, the administrative lineup is as follows. Bemis Elementary, Principal Danielle Osandua-Guique, Program Specialist Dysalina Van Bell. Boyd Elementary, Principal Marina Madrid. Casey Elementary, Principal George Bennett, Assistant Principal Joanna Cuellar. Curtis Elementary, Principal Vince Rollins, Program Specialist Alberto Gutierrez. Dallahan Elementary, Principal Daniel Husbands. Dunn Elementary, Principal Fernando Navarrete, Assistant Principal Thomas Bashaw. Fitzgerald Elementary, Principal Linda Minor. Garcia Elementary, Principal Ramona Rodriguez, Program Specialist Yolanda Jackson. Henry Elementary, Principal Sylvia Braggs. Hughbanks Elementary, Dr. Monty Stewart, Principal. Kelly Elementary, Adam Wagner, Principal, Mitzi Moreland, Assistant Principal. Kordiak Elementary, Chantal Anderson, Principal. Morgan Elementary, Leonard Buckner, Principal. Morris Elementary, Marion Thompson, Principal, Mary Lara, Program Specialist. Myers Elementary, Kathy Knowles, Principal. Preston Elementary, Robin McMillan, Principal. Simpson Elementary, Connie Richardson, Principal, Kathy King, Assistant Principal. Trapp Elementary, Dr. Eric Witherspoon, Principal. Werner Elementary, Sherilyn Scott, Principal, Assistant Principal, Roxanne Ulivari. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we have public hearing, uh, comments from the floor. This time, any person wishing to speak so any item not on the agenda will be granted three minutes to make a presentation. Dr. Wallace? We have one. Gloria Pena. Good evening, board, uh, cabinet members, superintendent, and audience. I'm here this evening. It's my last board meeting, but the first day of my beginning to be a retiree in the leisure world. I wanted to thank you all for providing my family with 30 years of uh, uh, home and shelter and food for their bellies and I truly appreciate working here at Rialto because it's a good place to work, it's a great school community, I have made many, many good friends here and I have seen so much growth in the district, Dr. Sebrin with the community, I've, I've never seen so many families uh, involved at the school sites with their sports and with the programs that we've provided for them and the academics and it's, it's just been a pleasure to be a part of that. And I was really thrilled to see Eisenhower getting all of these 
renovations because I'm an Eisenhower graduate. And I'm really happy to see that we're spending some of our, our bond money on Eisenhower and getting it up to par. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all. And you, you all have a, a blessed year. And I will be coming back to help Saida with the Ritz in the future. And just thank you so much. Next, we have comments on agenda items. Any person wishing to speak to any item on the agenda will be granted three minutes to make a presentation. No. And we have none. So we'll continue with item three, public hearing. Notice of consideration of the adoption of 2013-2014 budget. Reference J2.1-2. Uh, next, we have D, uh, public information and correspondence. Uh, there's a reminder, the next meeting of the Board of Education is scheduled for Wednesday, July 17th, uh, 2013 at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Dr. John R. Casalunas Educational Center. We, uh, Board President, if I recall, we might be switching that date possibly to July 15th, but we'll send out an email notifying uh, our staff yes. and, and the community. Thank you. Uh, uh, Vice President Montes, that is a possibility. So we will send out notices in case there is a, a change on that date. Uh, next, we have the consent calendar action section. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Board of Education to be routine and will be enacted in one motion. There will be no discussion of these items prior to the time the Board considers the motion unless members of the Board, the administrative staff, or the public request specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar. Mr. President, if I may, just uh, one minute. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to introduce our special guest and, um, and uh, just so the community knows. Uh, absolutely. Um, some of you uh, might have seen Mr. Pruitt um, uh, come to the podium earlier. I'd just like to pay respect to uh, uh, this man. Uh, Mr. John Pruitt is a uh, former governing board member himself, and um, he is here because the board has asked him to uh, uh, assess. assess us uh, a little bit and give us a little bit of advice and whatnot. So if you guys see him jumping uh, in the discussions and whatnot, he's here because we asked him to be here. Um, so uh, thank you and welcome, Mr. John Pruitt. And, and then also I'd like to thank uh, Officer Jones with Rialto PD for uh, joining us here tonight. Uh, you guys are always welcome here. Thank you very much for being here. And, and, and of course, um, I'd also uh, like to recognize our own peace officers as well, Officer Rodriguez and Officer Verdugo, who are here along with uh, Mr. Leary, our uh, Chief, Chief of uh, uh, Safety and Security, who are always here to join us as well. So thank you all for everything you do. Thank you. So next. <laughs> Thank you, Do we or Vice don't President we? Edgar <laughs> Montes. <laughs> Next, we need a, a, a proposal to approve the consent calendar. Uh, Ms. O'Kelly? Let me see here. Yeah. I think we mentioned those already, didn't we? Because we're looking at... Uh, Do we have any pulls at this time, Ms. O'Kelly? Uh, yes, I do. H3. Okay. Kelly, H3. We'll come back. Uh, Vice President Montes, do you have any pulls? I do not. Clerk Martinez, do we have any pulls? I'm not in this section, sir. Okay. With exception of H3, can we have a vote? to accept the uh, consent calendar as written? Motion. Motion. Do we have a motion? I, I propose that we accept um, reference E through I of the consent calendar. Okay, so we have Mr. Martinez. Do we have a second? A second. And a second by Ms. O'Kelly. Vote by the board. I had a poll. Uh, with exception of H3. Oh, on all the others. 
Aye. 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 Okay, so we have 4-0. Okay, now let's return to H3. <laughs> I had question, uh, questions on a couple of these contracts. Um, the first one being a school loop uh, consultant to provide content management system. Um, and uh, Dr. Seaburn, can you fill me in or have someone? Dr. Levine. Can we get a motion to, did you have a motion, a request? I just she's, want. She's I'm asking a question we're right now. We're in discussion of the item that I pulled. Okay, but uh, you were asking for, Direction, we're going to get please. some help here. Excuse me, since that item has been pulled, you need to make a motion to take that item by itself. A okay. motion. Okay, I thought we did and, that, but. No, uh, you have to take them individually once it's been pulled. Okay, so that item has been pulled. Yes. Now, we're going to make a motion. And it's that item H3. H3 to assess it. To be that motion to H3, do we have a. Proposal. Move someone, move it, second it, and then discussion. And then discuss we'll come back to okay. you. So, oh, okay, so we pulled it. Now, do we have a motion to uh, assess H3? Yes. And um, that is. I propose we make a motion to okay. assess okay. H3. <laughs> I second I'm lost. Okay, and Mr. Martinez <laughs> has seconded it. And then, all in favor? Aye. 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 So now we assess H3. Okay. Dr. Levine. Yes. Um, as you know, uh, Rialto Unified has a website, and each school has a website as well. And when you have websites, you need to have a host of a website. And I'll ask Mr. Sosa to come on up and explain uh, what we were using before to host our website um, and what we're proposing now um, as far as School Loop to be the host of the district and the site's website. Thank you. Good evening, board and honorable superintendent. For the last seven years, we've been using the eChalk system as our school and department web hosting. So in other words, that's the system that has all of our web pages. And we have a separate web page uh, for the Rialto.k12 that has some of our content on there. The contract for eChalk was quite costly, and so over the last two years, the staff has been looking at ways to reduce that cost for a savings onto the district while still getting the same functionality for the school district. And so we were able to find a provider to give us the web hosting that we really need in our community deserves to have that service at a significantly reduced cost. So this contract is for $11,000 for web hosting, 3,500 of which is initial training. So in years going forward, we propose only $7,000 a year, which is quite different from the $43,900 a year we were paying with eChalk. That was what categorical money was paying. We also had 85% of the contract being picked up by the federal government under E-rate, which was over $110,000. So aggregate, that was about a hundred and forty thousand dollar contract that we've been able to whittle down to eleven thousand. Wow! So it's a significant savings to the district while being able to provide a much better product for our community. Okay, Perfect. thank you. Very nice. Excellent. Um, I also had questions on uh, three more um, contracts. Okay, and but we need to conclude on this item first before we move. It's it's in the same. It's item. in the same. It's in the same, same item. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, these are uh, contracts requested by categorical programs that I have some questions yeah. about. Um, okay. Ms. Ms. McGuire, Robin. Which ones are they, Ms. O'Kell? Uh, well, the first one, Cayenne Systems. And I guess my question there, first of all, are we, do we currently have these programs? Yes, we do. We currently utilize KN system. Okay. And it manages Title I? Yes, it does. It keeps uh, a better record system of our supplemental educational services, um, all of the student databases, 
all of our, it allows us to be more electronic. Uh, every single provider that we have in the district, whether it's 30 or 60, we communicate with them via email. Uh, we're able to pull reports. I'm able to uh, email them individually if I see that they are not servicing students. And it allows me an electronic way to monitor every student contract that's in our supplemental services. We have over, sometimes between 1,200 and 1,400, and I actually approve every single uh, student learning plan. Uh, I read it, and if there's something that I have a question on, I am able to send it back to them, email them, and give them direction on, or either ask questions or give them direction on, on a different path for a student. Okay. Can't argue that. So this sounds beneficial. Um, it is beneficial. We this is, would be our going into or maybe our third year utilizing that system, and it's hasn't it's streamlined everything in one section, but it's mm -hmm. allowed me to have a better handle on what the board is usually uh, looking at in terms of the cost. We do spend 20 percent of our Title I set aside as mandated. It's over 1.45 million dollars. So it gives me a way to monitor what these uh, providers are doing and really look at what services our students are getting. Okay. Um, basically, same question for key data. Is that, is that a contract we currently have? Yes, it is. And I'm going to bring Dan Sosa up to talk about key data. <laughs> Thank you. Key Data Systems is a data partner that Jen Harper and I have used for, for a number of years, and it's one of the uh, services of which we give services directly back to the schools. We, we give them our raw data, and they scrub it, and they give us the best projections right. that we have for our CST, and so that the schools can make those database decisions. And this is the company we have been using, Yes, right? we've been using them for a number of years. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. And uh, last one, Mrs. MacGyver, my learning plan. Uh, my learning plan is what we went to. Actually, we, we changed this product for, like Dan did, for a, a more cost-effective product, but we found it to be beneficial for professional development. It tracks every single professional development that we have in this district for every administrator, teacher, or paraprofessional. Teachers are able to sign up for the different offerings that we have in the district, and we are able to produce schools with uh, viable reports on what teachers have gone to trainings, what trainings they've attended, and teachers can also monitor this themselves as well. So it really helps us in monitoring um, that professional development. It also supports um, our Title II plan uh, because when they come to audit our district or, or review us, they're looking at staff development and at a fingertip mm -hmm. we can pull reports mm -hmm. and data for every single school in this district. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We okay now, Ms. O'Kelly? Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have a proposal now to accept uh, H3? I propose we accept H, approve H3. Second. Do we have a second? Okay. So moved. And all in favor? Aye. 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 So we have a 4-0 on H3. Okay. Next we have facilities planning items. J. Excuse me. Action items, starting with Jay. Action items will be enacted in one motion unless members of the Board of Education request specific items to be discussed. Do we have a proposal to accept J through L? Do we have any pulls? Do we have any pulls? Um, okay? Yes. Uh, two and five. Okay, two and five. Vice President Montes. Yes, um, one. And four. One and four. And Clerk uh, Martinez. Uh, my concerns can be addressed by the uh, previous polls. Okay, with exception of 
Item 2, uh, 1, 2, 4, and 5, can we get a proposal to accept the remaining uh, items? I propose we accept um, items J through L, um, excluding 8, is it uh, J, 1, 2, 4, and 5. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we have 4 all. Okay, so let's start with uh, Mr. Montes, uh, Vice President Montes, uh, item 1. Uh, we start with 1, and we have to, uh, we pulled it, so now we have to uh, vote on uh, accepting the discussion. Do I have a vote? to accept discussion on item one. Is that correct? That's what we did on the last item. <laughs> Do we have a proposal to, uh, for a motion for item one? I propose we discuss item one. Correct. And we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We discuss item one. I just would like to uh, uh, ask um, uh, uh, Dr. Seabrim if it's okay with you, I, I'd like to ask um, uh, Dr. Wallace, since I don't see Alejandro here uh, today, oh. okay. is, is he, I'd like to, I, I just have a question regarding um, how many therapists we currently have, I believe it's 15, I'm not exactly sure, uh, and uh, how many more are we planning on hiring? if we're planning on hiring any more? Mm -hmm. And how many students do we serve? Uh, Alex. All right. <laughs> let, let me repeat that for you. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, the, this item that we're being asked to approve is uh, to uh, contract between the Rialto Unified School District and Envo Healthcare Associates Incorporated to provide speech and language therapists to the district at a cost not to exceed $250,000 effective July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2014. So it's a contract for this next school year um, that we're coming into. And my question is, is uh, how many speech therapists do we currently have? Um, I, I want to say 15, but I could be wrong. 14. Okay. And um, are we planning on hiring any more? We, we're actually, I, I heard your previous question about how many total students we have. Yeah, and, and also how many, how many students are we going to be serving? You know, I, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared with those numbers today, but what I can tell you, I can give you an average. That'd be with great. 14 Ballpark. speech therapists to start the school year, we're going to be slightly over the education code of 55 students per speech therapist. So we're already going to need additional staff to start the school year because every single the, our average is going to be above 55 That's per, with per speech therapist right can't can't give you the exact numbers of students but that's right. what the average right. is when we figure that out so the invo contract is to bring back two contract speech therapists that we used last year through the same company so the two two of the 14 are two invo therapists mm -hmm. one was at warner elementary and the other one um, worked at two schools, Preston and um, one of our middle schools. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing back two qualified speech therapists that we used last year with the contract. In order to make sure we're in compliance. Right. The, the one benefit with, um, with using contract staff is if, if unexpectedly our numbers dip, we can give 30-day notices to, to those mm -hmm. staff and, and end our contract at that time. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you very much for that item. But since Alejandro's there, um, and uh, item four uh, okay. is related. Okay, hold on. Let's okay. refer that to the superintendent and uh, Dr. Sebram. One second. He's communication. Are we supposed to vote on this? Well, we can finish yes, this. Yes. One. yes. If anybody yes. else, yeah. else has, I, I let's, let's go ahead and finish this. I propose we move to approve item one. Okay. Second. Do we have second? So we have a uh, second by Vice President Montes. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion carries. Next, we have item two that we pulled, and we need a motion. Uh, uh, President Ayala, uh, may I no, please no, draw no, your attention? No, not yet. Let them do what they need to do. Okay. Um, we have a motion to accept item oh, two, for motion two. To uh, discuss. I propose we discuss item two. Okay, we second. have a second. That's not All a in motion. favor? Aye. Let's carry on with the discussion. Item two. Okay. This is kind of more of a comment than anything else. Um, we get this in our packet, you know, what, four or five days before the board meeting. And most of us don't have a degree in accounting or finance and uh, can't make a whole lot of sense out of it. And I know we have a board workshop scheduled for the end of July on the budget. Um, I just wanted to state I really would have appreciated having this before we have to approve the budget and it's time sensitive because, uh, you know, I can look through it and gather certain information, but, you know, it's not uh, exactly easy reading <laughs> or enjoyable. <laughs> so, I just want <laughs> you, you are correct, Ms. O'Kella, uh, especially for a budget the size of ours. Mm -hmm. Uh, there should be some explanation. Do you have any comment, Muhammad? Well, the the budget that you have tonight, the board, uh, so you're right, uh, Mrs. O'Kelly, this is a time sensitive. We are required by law to submit the budget by June 30th, mm -hmm. which is uh, this mm -hmm. Friday. Um, and as you know, the governor hasn't signed uh, the budget yet. Uh, we believe he's going to sign tomorrow morning. That's the latest update I have. Uh, we can wait for tomorrow or Sunday. He is until June 30th um, to officially to sign the, all the budget bill. Uh, the bottom line, the budget you have tonight, uh, we have to board, you have to approve this, and any changes comes up to governor signed uh, official budget by June 30th. We'll bring um, it's called 45 days revisions to the budget to our programs, our districts. Any changes we will bring back to you for uh, further approval. So the budget you see tonight is not all built based on governance uh, plan and legislative uh, approval of the LCFF funding model because not, no details are available at this time. What are the conditions of those funding? What does that mean for our districts? How they're funding earmark for English learner, foster care, and others. So nothing is available. This is because of the timing of this uh, and the lateness of the decisions of the budget, we can bring that um, plan into our plan. So what we advise by the state and the county schools and other um, uh, that we need to do best case and worst case. So what do you have present to you like a traditional model of the budget and build some of the items such as COLA and lower deficit. Those are safe to use, apply to our plan. But seeing the budget, as uh, I'd like to draw your attention, J2-2. Mm -hmm, I know. Uh, and if you've seen this, I, I highlight and bold uh, that this budget not built on based on local control right. funding formula. And also, I'd like to draw attention that our budget has an ongoing structural deficit. Even though I, uh, I built a COLA and a de lower deficit, and I'd like to draw attention that w because of, I don't know what is LCF funding, uh, how much is going to bring to us until we get all the all the details available? That problem may not be a problem, but I'm just giving you what you see today. Mm -hmm. And this budget is presented to you tonight as a approved budget, meaning when we file to the uh, county tomorrow after your approval tonight, it, we'll get a, a approved um, certified by the state by the county. And any changes further going to reflect uh, how it, the our three years plan looks like. Do we have any further deficit? Do we have any structural issue? Do we have to uh, cut any further programs or anything else? So it is, it is, it is the best case of what we can bring to you tonight right. for approval. I, I want to add something. I agree with everything you said. Thank you. <laughs> but I want to apologize. <laughs> I want to apologize to the board. Anytime a board votes on a budget, they should have an opportunity to hear in detail or answer any questions without having to go through this. If we would have that opportunity, we would not have had to hear your speech tonight. So we'll do better. Okay. That was, that was it. I just wanted to make that comment. So I propose we um, approve item number two. 
Okay. And do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So there we go. <laughs> we had a proposal, and uh, we're going to turn this into a motion. There. And. Uh, Motion to accept. Uh, Mr. I, I apologize for uh, interrupting you again. Uh, the requirement is you have to open public hearing, invite for the public to comment, then you close before you can act on it. I apologize for interruption. No, that's okay. That's a requirement, but. No, yeah. that's, that's okay. We're here uh, to make sure we, we, we do we, things. We would like, uh, it, it, it would help us if you, could, you guys can include that in the agenda next it, time. Is so there? Is there? C3. Oh, okay. Um, do you want to read it or? I've got, well, this is, uh, okay, this is another item here, though. We're, we're working on. Uh, Under public hearing, it has a public, oh, that's hearing, right. public we, we, hearing about yeah. the, the adoption that's of the right. budget. That's we, right. We did cover it. We did cover it. But it, it, you have to open oh, and oh. close. Oh, okay. For public comment. Then, then you can take action. Sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused Mr. here President. on what we're doing here now. Mr. President, Mr. President, may I? Sure, please. Uh, let me help you out a little bit here. Need a motion to open a public hearing. That simple. That simple. Okay. And can we get a motion to open public hearing? So move. And a second. We have a second. A second. All Discussion in favor? from the public. Seeing none, we will close. Okay. Oh, oh we, we have, have we have oh, we, we might have one. I'm sorry. There you go. Hello, my name is Don Mendoza. Donald Mendoza. In regards to the budget, it says assumptions. Yes. Nothing's set in stone until the governor signs that budget. Correct. Once he signs that budget, you guys will meet again. You'll have all the definitive numbers. And then you'll move forward what's in the best interest of the district. Yes. So, I mean, next year you're going to have the same issue, and it's all based on just assumptions. So, uh, maybe this exchange wasn't really necessary. I agree with Dr. Sebring what he said. You know, maybe next time, uh, next year, you know, you'll get the information a lot sooner. You guys can meet and discuss it. But it's just all based on assumptions. And, um, once you get the definitive numbers, you move forward, and maybe this exchange won't be necessary, and you guys will have a uh, maybe a better understanding, a clearer picture of what the budget is, and then just move forward. Those are just my thoughts. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I just like to add, I, I believe uh, this is worst case scenario, mm -hmm. whether or not the governor signs <laughs> the budget, correct? Based on what we know as of now. And, and, and then also, most likely, we're going to have to bring this back, amend it or change it in some form? Yeah, the, the, budget, the, yes. the, yeah. the budget requires that uh, any changes to uh, you know, reflect on our programs and the funding, we have to bring 45 days, uh, revise uh, and bring back to you. Yes. And we have a deadline to meet by tomorrow with the county? The so deadline to file this adopted budget is June 30th which is uh, uh, Friday. Friday. Okay. So, that, and we don't have any further board meeting. This is the only board meeting. That's the reason that you have until now. Mm -hmm. We, we as assume the state will act on the budget much earlier date so we could bring all the detail for you for discussions prior to act tonight. But that didn't happen. Okay. When, when they do, we'll revise the budget and bring it back to you yeah. for approval. Okay. Any other questions or uh, comments? Okay, can we get a motion to uh, close uh, public hearing? You have a motion, just ask to close it. Asking to close. Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Mr. Martinez and uh, Mr. Aye. Montes, all in favor? Aye. 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 So we close public Pu hearing. Public hearing is now closed. Okay, so we, uh, we need a vote still on J2. Okay, so we need a, I believe we had a motion. A proposed. A proposed motion. So now can we get a motion to vote on uh, J2? I make a motion that we approve item J2. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So we're done with J2, and now we're moving on to J4. Um, and we. Mr. Pruitt, may, can, go ahead. May, can we, you clarify something for us? Because yes. this was all based on our discussion today, and yeah. obviously we're a little confused. Okay, uh, the president has to make the actual motion. Am yes. I correct? Yes. So Let we make a. We say I propose. No. If we, I, I, I apologize to the public. I gave the board a lot of information in a short period of time. <laughs> a lot of information and tonight is the very first time and they are trying it after a couple of hours. So I apologize that I didn't get this information to them much sooner so they can have it. The only time you use a proposal is when you want to change something that's already yeah, present. Yeah, it's my understanding any of us can make the first motion. Right. No, okay. you, only the chair can carry the motion and open it. Uh, only the chair. To change? No, to carry the motion, to uh, carry it through. And previous meetings that I looked at, uh, everybody's making motions. Only the chair can say, <laughs> I, uh, may I have a motion, so move a second discussion, you discuss it, and then you vote. Um, uh, from that standpoint, when you propose this, let's say uh, the item says we're going to have 28 days of furlough. I, that, that's, that's just an example. <laughs> <laughs> Watch oh. out. Oh. We should have warned you. <laughs> I, I, I just want to see who was awake, you know. <laughs> and someone might say, you know, that's, that's kind of extreme. I propose that we have zero furlough days. You can propose to make the change. Then the chair whoever the chair is used to the president because he can give the meeting to someone else says okay we have a motion to make amend item whatever it is to zero days he's changed it but the board member has proposed to make that change you only use propose when you're making a change mm. the yeah. way it is okay. now so uh Let's put it this way. You got the agenda. Let's drop the propose for the night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just go with your motion. I so move. A second. Discussion. You discuss it. Once the discussion is done, okay. Then we'll take the vote. One, two, three. A, B, C. Motion. Second. I mean, motion. Move it. Second. Discussion. Vote. So, so I need to rescind my motion and let. Hey, I like that. That's the president. Yeah. Very good, sir. Very okay. good. Yes. So I rescind my motion okay. and uh, allow. We're Very on, good. We're on item four right now. We're on item four. And uh, do we have a motion? Oh, we, we've already pulled it, okay, mm -hmm. because we wanted to carry on discussion. So let's open up the discussion on item four. And you, okay, so we have the clerk of the board, uh, Mr. Martinez. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm concerned at the cost at this time. Uh, I have no, no problem going through this. Um, uh, having fiscal crisis management assistance, that usually comes along with the stigma that we're in trouble, and we're really not. Um, that's one concern. The second concern is the cost, again, at this time. Um, we're trying to bring as many people back as we can. And once that is done, I'd love to see it with, um, with that other concern still there. Mr. President. Okay. Uh, any other comments on item four? Go ahead, uh, Vice President Montes. Thank you, uh, Board President Mr. Oyala. Um, for clarification purposes, I'll just go ahead and read this uh, resolution uh, for the members of the public and our community. Uh, this item is a special education program in-depth review. Um, and it's asking the district is in need of a firm to perform an in-depth review of its special education program operations and make recommendations for improving the program as well as implementing the recommendations. The district is recommending contracting with fiscal crisis man and management assistance team to complete 
this in-depth review. FICMAT provides a variety of services to school districts and county offices of education upon request. The district has requested that FICMAT assign professionals to study specific aspects of the Rialto Unified School District's special education operations. These professionals may include staff of the FICMAT team, county offices of education, the California State Department of Education, school districts, or private contractors. The scope and object objectives of the in-depth review will include but not, limited, but not be limited to the following areas. Program effectiveness, number one. Program effect efficiency, number two. Special education transportation, number three. Communication, number four. And within that, we have parent communication and interdepartmental communication. And then number five is fiscal implications. FICMAT has estimated costs for this in-depth review will not exceed 49000 including reimbursable expenses. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve an agreement with the Fiscal Crisis and Management Assistance Team to complete an in-depth review of the district's special education operations at a not to exceed cost of 49000 including reimbursable expenses to be paid from general fund and special education program. Uh, this item was submitted by Mr. Mohammed Islam, and if you could, Mr. Islam, just elaborate. Hey, on uh, wait, if you could refer to Dr. Yeah. Sebram. Dr. Sebram, I apologize. Uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like uh, to ask Mr. Mohammed to elaborate a little bit on what specifically this item would try to do. If you ask me, I'll direct him to elaborate on it. Uh, or whoever would best answer it. Right now, it'd be Muhammad to do that. Thank you, Dr. Sibram. Uh, this item uh, presented to you tonight upon your request. As you recall, um, uh, you expressed some concerns about the special ed programs uh, and the effectiveness of the program for our students and, the, and the, uh, everything uh, within the program. So upon your request, we engage um, uh, and request for proposals, and we bring the best proposals tonight for your consideration and approval tonight. And in your opinion, is FICMAT one of the best, if not the they're, best? They're the best uh, on the special ed program in the statewide. Okay. They're the best with a lot of them. Yes. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I, I just would like to say that um, uh, uh, if we uh, um, approve this in-depth review, um, uh, it, it would clear the air regarding um, uh, concerns um, brought forth by parents um, uh, whose uh, children are students of our district, special education students. Um, we just approved the contract to um, bring in some extra help for our speech therapists. Um, uh, we just also approved uh, previously tonight to um, pay for transportation um, for some of our students, uh, some of the parents who choose to drive their students to um, different schools outside of our district who require uh, special types of um, uh, learning and instruction. Um, so I, I think um, by us approving this uh, in-depth review, um, it would clear the air, and um, if there's anything um, uh, that we uh, uh, are not doing correctly or we can do better, um, I, I think it'd be great f uh, to have somebody as professional as FIGMAT to um, take a look at it and say, hey, uh, you know, you guys are doing good here, but over here you might be able to do a little bit better. And um, uh, I understand cost is a big factor, um, you know, and, and 49,000 uh, is 49,000. Um, but even if it was more, um, if there's a need to make sure that our students are getting uh, the best education possible that we can provide them, uh, I think we want to uh, make sure we're doing everything that we can to assure uh, our community and our parents that we are indeed doing the best for our students. That's all I have, if anybody else would like to uh, add. Any other comments on uh, J4? No, just that I agree with Mr. Montes. Okay. If there are no more uh, discussions, then I call for a motion. Um, I move that we accept uh, or we approve item number four, J4. Okay. And do we have a second? So moved.
Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. So we have 3 1. And uh, no vote by uh, Clerk Martinez. Next, we have uh, the last item, that, uh, other than uh, one that I'm going to read out at the end. We have uh, J5 that we pulled, and uh, it's open for discussion. Um, well, I had a concern. The first concern was in the original write-up, because it's been altered. Um, it's been revised, I guess I should say. Um, that. The special education audit item is, is referred to as an in-depth review, but this one is not, and it refers to selective contracts. My original request was to um, have a, to review all contracts between 2009 and 2012, and then realizing that might be a lot of contracts, uh, you know, it may be to amend that to those that where the total amount paid to the vendor or the person or the company was $5,000 or more. Um, if that's selective, that's okay, but selective kind of implies that we're going to pick and choose which contracts we look at, which would kind of defeat the whole purpose of this. Um, you know, my, th that's my concern. I also have a concern the difference in price kind of indicates that this is not going to be nearly as intensive an uh, audit as the special education audit. So I don't know if it's going to accomplish uh, anything. And the, the price has been reduced even less. And then I guess my last concern here is, uh, you know, it's being paid for out of the Board of Education Fund. Well, I'd kind of heard rumors we had a fund, but I didn't know anything about it or how much was in it or, you know, but uh, it would be nice to know what we have in the fund and what it can be used for. You know, I could use a vacation, but, you know. <laughs> this. <laughs> Please. I, I didn't know what we were going to do. It's going to be paid out, out of general fund, oh, just like okay. the other one. The, the other thing w we were looking at is, um, Originally, you had the board, the board members that expressed certain areas, certain accounts, uh, contracts that they want looked at, mm -hmm. and so we could save ourselves some money by following you. If you know the ones that you want to be looked at, we'll look at those because otherwise we'll go through every contract that was approved before board members were added to the board, mm -hmm. plus all the ones that you have. Approved. He'll have to review all of those. So it's just the scope that we want. It, it, we'll do whatever you ask. If you have certain ones that you want us to look at, uh, regardless if it's 20 or whatever it is, we'll look at those. If because if we say we're going to look at all of them, I would imagine this price is going to change. And the other thing that we had in there, our purchasing policies and processes, right. we already have auditors looking at that. So why add this to this guy to come in or whoever it is to do something that someone else has already done? So we'll re review every contract or, or a payout of anybody that you guys want us to do. We'll list all of them, and that's what we'll do. Because other, they could come in and make a fortune out, out of us looking at a contract for $6,000, and it was approved. It's a routine. We do it every year. There's nothing for them to look at. But... There are some that you have concerns about, and, and we just want, when we say selected, we weren't going to select them. Mm. We wanted the board to select them. If okay. you have certain ones that you want to be looked at, you tell us that. Okay. Because we're not going to select any of them. Okay. We'll follow the directions that you guys give us. Um, I did have something about that. I think the, uh, I've never heard any kind of review of our procedures, but um, it might be a good idea for the, us to just go ahead since that was included in the original write-up, um, especially because if any of our policies could be viewed as questionable or ineffective or something, maybe we need to set new policies or revise them, so maybe we should include that in the package. Yeah, I, I don't recall, uh, I agree with Dr. Sidram, I don't recall the uh, purchasing policies, processes, and procedures being ever questioned um, in the past, but s since it's on here and staff is recommending it, 
then maybe perhaps it would be a good idea to, you know, um, have uh, professionals take a look at our purchasing policies, uh, processes, and procedures to make sure that we're complying, uh, okay. you know, with all. So, might I propose that we um, just amend this item or the 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 revised item to you know keep this the same, but to include the scope that was in the original item? Okay. Do you have a uh, copy there? Yeah, the it's original. The agenda. The original's on the agenda. Yeah. Right. It's okay. under section J. We'll do that. You can do that. I just want to caution the business department. Don't treat me like this again. Don't make me spend dual amounts of money for the same thing. I have to live with that, and I have to report to these guys. If we got auditors here now that's supposed to be doing the same thing, why would we write a proposal to do the same thing with someone else? That's all I ask of my staff. Don't put me in that situation. We wrote it this way. We'll do it this way. Okay. Okay. So you make a motion to amend? I, I make the motion. She makes a proposal because she wants to go back to please. I, pr I propose that we approve the original item as it was uh, published in the agenda. Okay. Do we have a motion? We have a proposal? Question. Uh, Question? We need a second first. Is, isn't there something that we have to do? We have to bring back, rescind this, and then bring back the other? Thank you. If you're going back to the original, you rescind what you were about to propose. So if you have a motion, you rescind anything that was on the table okay. before. Okay. So I will and publicly. Since it was not on there. Just go with your regular motion. I will motion. publicly rescind. No, the, no. It, 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 the, the, you didn't have a motion to change it. It didn't go through. So what we want to do, item, what item is it? J5. It's J5. We would like to have a motion on J5, and someone will say so moved, and someone else will say second, and then you already kind of discussed it. You drop that, and then you vote. It's one, two, three. Okay, sounds simple to me. Yes. Can we have a motion on J5? I move we accept, uh, we move to approve item J5 as it was originally submitted. Do we have in a the second? Agenda. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Okay, the last item here I'll read out is the uh, discussion action item 8 that uh, was not on the agenda that we read earlier. It's to approve an MOU between California School Employees Association, CSEA, Chapter 203, and Rialto Unified School District concerning the implementation of a classified layoff that the board has approved to take effect on July 1st, 2013. The MOU is to delay the implementation implementation of the layoff until July 15, 2013, so it must be addressed before July 1st. We have a motion. Uh, I make a motion that we uh, approve the MOU. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. Okay. President. President, I would like to introduce our new director of risk management, who is here tonight, Derek Harris, and he will begin work. <laughs> he will start working for us on July 8th. Item M will be scratched. Next, we have comments from members of the Board of Education. Uh, Ms. O'Kelly. 
Well, I'm not looking forward to the heat that is coming because I don't like heat, but we all have to deal with it. So we have a few hot days coming, but I hope everybody is enjoying their summer. I'm enjoying my new grandson. He's absolutely perfect, of course. And uh, we have a lot of fun with him. I would also like to just apologize for the confusion tonight. We're trying to get, make sure we're doing everything right. And uh, we did, as Mr. Pruitt said, he gave us a lot of information today and we got some of it mixed up. But we're going to do our homework and, and work on that. So thank you all for coming tonight and enjoy your summer. Well, thank you, uh, board member uh, Ms. O'Kelly. Next we have. Uh, Board member, uh, clerk of the board, uh, Mr. Martinez. Thank you, President Ayala. I just want to uh, thank everyone for attending. Thank CSEA for the MOU. Thank REA for working with us as well. Um, get some rest. Try and stay out of the heat. And uh, Mr. Pruitt, thank you so much for your guidance. And uh, it, it's invaluable. Mr. President. Thank you. Next, we have Vice President Montez. Thank you, Board President, Mr. Ayala. Uh, good evening, everybody. Buenas noches. Uh, I just would like to um, uh, uh, thank everybody here today. Uh, uh, you know, it's summertime um, over in my neighborhood, just down the street. Um, while I'm gone at work, I'm going by to the house to check up on, on it because I know there's a lot of teenagers out of school right now. and. Some of my neighbors are getting toilet paper, coming home to toilet paper on their trees or eggs on their windows. So um, I'm, you know, just cruising by to make sure, you know, some of the students uh, ain't mad at me for whatever reason. Um, and um, uh, I also, uh, uh, again, would like to thank um, uh, our, our uh, police officers uh, that have been helping us with our meetings from Rialto PD and also um, our own peace officers. And again, I'd like to thank also Mr. Pruitt um, I will say this, Mr. Pruitt, um, I have my own copy of the Roberts Rules of Order, and I have a parliamentary procedure book, and I will, if anybody knows, I will be look, keeping a close eye on the information and advice that you are giving the board. Um, so uh, uh, thank you again. Um, I look forward to uh, learning uh, from you, and, and, um, you know, and I think uh, the board appreciates really what you're here to, to help us with. So um, uh, with that said, um, I also would like to give thanks to uh, Dr. Sebram uh, for um, his choice in uh, this year's uh, Honorary Superintendent's uh, Scholarship Award. Um, Jocelyn Hernandez is very, very well deserved of that scholarship award tonight. And, um, and, and I'm sure there's many, many other students. And too bad we have budgetary problems, otherwise we'd give, be giving more of those $1,000 scholarships to our students. But um, thank you again for that. And uh, to everybody here tonight, thank you. And um, uh, have a good summer. Well, thank you, Vice President Martinez. I'm, I'm so Montez. proud. <laughs> Montez, I've said that twice now. <laughs> Just want to make sure you're awake. That's Mr. Montez. <laughs> I'm so proud of this board. And I'm so happy everybody's in a good mood. Uh, but we are risking to improve and so that we can provide better services to our community and our, and our students. Obviously, we keep our kids in our minds at, at, at uh, high priorities, okay? They are why we're here. And I want to remind everybody that a few simple thoughts, kindness counts. And it's important to establish pri priorities in our lives, okay? Uh, and to keep it short, if, when you're talking to somebody, if they're talking about somebody else, then they're probably talking about you also. And, you know, it's easy to say us and them and us and them, but you know what? It's not us and them, it's us. And we're here in Rialto, and we're proud. And, we're, and it's okay to make a mistake, you know, but we're going to make them together, but we're going to improve and we thank people like Mr. Pruitt coming all the way from Chino to help us out here in Rialto. And with that said, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjournment at, uh, what is that, 840?